Joining us now is Mr. Agrawal. One hour up. So just one hour after the listing, where the company listed about 76 rupees, uh, it's now the company has surged by about 17 percent. Now it's about 90 rupees per share. Uh, Mr. Agrawal, welcome to NT Profit. Thank you so much, Tushar. Uh, you are seeing the stock price, not me, <laughs> but I'm getting this information through you. Exciting to hear this. <laughs> So, first of all, reaction to the listing premium that you are seeing, 76 at listing, now about 17% up, first first reactions. No, I want to thank all the investors through your channel uh, who have reposed faith, faith in us. We brought this uh, issue uh, at a price which we felt was attractive uh, to everybody, uh, to all kinds of investors, retail investors, institutional investors and everybody. And, uh, you know, uh, the, in the end, pricing is a function of the market. So company or promoter can't do much beyond doing the re their work on the on the floor of the factory. Mm -hmm. But uh, it feels good that people uh, have liked our story. People have uh, put their faith in us. And, you know, our story is a story of building the India of the future. It's a, a story of building technology, building manufacturing, and uh, uh, built by Indians, world-class technology, world-class products built by Indians here in India. And uh, that story needs the uh, partnership and support of the street. Uh, and we look forward to having a very long-term relationship where we hope we can build uh, wealth for everybody on the street. You're the first uh, pure play EV company to list in India. Investors now, now looking at this performance in the first hour, investors will be closely looking at what you're doing next. Mm. What's next, sir? Well, that's the billion dollar question i guess <laughs> we have uh, you know uh, if you see our journey we've been focused on uh, scooters and we have a portfolio of scooters we are the market leaders and we've been uh, talking about the fact that we will now move to motorbikes soon mm -hmm. india is a very large two wheeler market scooters is one third motorbikes are two thirds so motorbikes is actually the larger market out there and uh, we have our annual launch event coming up in yeah. uh, 6 days 15th yeah. august har saal hum 15 august ko independence day ko apna mm -hmm. product launch karte hain with pride and uh, with a vision for the future. So hopefully this time what we show, we've been talking about bikes for a while and hopefully people will like what we show. You're clearly the market leader with about a third of the electric two-wheeler market. Uh, you're going to motorcycles, but there are incumbents, there are upstarts as well who will obviously get to catch up with the mm -hmm. market leader. So what is now your differentiating factor? Okay, everybody sells two-wheelers. But what is your differentiating factor that why should people consider Ola? Is it just because of scooter or is it to do with the battery also that you're producing? Absolutely. Our differentiating factor fundamentally, Tushar, is that we build the best products. Mm -hmm. And uh, we build the future. We make a because EV is the future. Across the world in automotive, uh, it's clear EV is growing very fast and uh, taking the place of the traditional internal combustion engine. To build the best products, we create the technologies in-house specifically the cell you know just like uh, internal combustion or uh, purani zamane mein in the ice era the engine was all the heart of the vehicle mm -hmm. in the ev era the cell is the heart of the vehicle mm -hmm. and the cell technology is a complex one we have created that technology and that ip in house and that is what delivers differentiation be it faster charging be it longer range be it lighter weight every kind of uh, functionality that you expect in the vehicle is delivered through that and that's our differentiator with which we are able to build better products faster and at lower cost the future is electric, you clearly mentioned it. Is the future profitable as well? <laughs> you, uh, you have grown, so the revenue has gone, grown to more than 5,000 crore. Yeah. The loss has also expanded with the last numbers that we saw in the RSP. In absolute, but in percentage it's come down a it's lot. It's come down. Yeah. The EBITDA margin, yeah. so to speak. Uh, where, when do you start reporting profits on the net yeah. profit? Uh, so what is the aim that you have? Sure. That's what now the investors will look at it. Yeah. We uh, aim to build, uh, you know, uh, it's an interesting thing. We're building a sustainability-focused company to mm -hmm. build a sustainable environment. And we want to build this company sustainably, okay. which means we want to build a profitable growth story. We're not there yet. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you see our last two years of financials, which are in the prospectus, FI 23 to 24, revenue went up 90%. EBITDA mm -hmm. margins improved from negative 43% to negative 19%, a 24-point improvement in just one year. This journey, uh, you know, as uh, we continue to improve volumes and hence revenue, our cost doesn't go up in a manufacturing business. So the uh, operating leverage drives better margins. Mm. And secondly, the strategy of vertical integration with our cell coming into our products next year. Drives, the cell is the costliest part of an EV. So as the cell, we start manufacturing in-house in India, save the uh, margins that global suppliers take, save the duties. That will further drive gross margins and hence a beta. So this is the roadmap. I can't share numbers today, mm -hmm. but soon we'll be publishing our Q1 results, and okay. uh, I hope investors will take a look. 
do you have okay mm -hmm. you're not talking numbers but do you have a production target for uh, the batteries as well as for uh, the scooters at this point of time we uh, we have a, the highest government allocation of the PLI scheme, mm. 20 gigawatt hours. So we aim to get to that stage over a few years. Uh, right now we are uh, we have installed one and a half gigawatt hour. Uh, we will go to five uh, sometime early to mid next year, and uh, so that's the plan on the uh, on the gigafactory capacity. On automotive capacity, we have a million units a year already installed. As we're growing into that in the future, then we'll expand more. All right. So. Uh you're, are you still are you already making money on your scooters, uh, or are you still some loss that's happening on every unit that you are selling at this point of time? I answered your profitability okay. point, so I gave you the directional input I can okay. give. Uh, okay. Rest uh, I'll have to uh, talk okay. in my quarterly results. So let's look at a couple of more numbers. Look at from the capital expenditure point of view, uh, where you're standing, the amount of money that you spent this year for FI25, and what is the debt to equity picture also looking like for you? See, uh, uh, we are actually retiring some debt in this uh, from the use of proceeds about 800 crores so it will bring down some of the uh, cost for the company in terms of interest now looking ahead uh, our automotive factory already has some headroom for growth so there's no immediate uh, more capex required over there in any large uh, amount uh, the cell factory will take some more capex as we bring it to uh, production but looking ahead we will find a balance between debt and equity we will uh, we, you know we will try and make sure we have a good balance sheet uh, funded through both debt and equity. Our projects are funded through part debt, part equity. And as we go ahead, there will be accruals, there will be uh, uh, other sources of capital with which we can fund different parts of the projects. Again, today's directional inputs, but as we go along quarter to quarter, we'll share more okay. with investors. Yeah. Finally, uh, now your listed company, there are more EV startups, I mean, hundreds of EV startups who are looking to make motorcycles and scooters. Mm. They are OEMs. Your message to both of them at this point of time? <laughs> My message to the industry overall is, uh, uh, I think, purani cheezon ko chhodke hume nayi dunya dekhni hai, bhavishya ki taraf badna hai, aur bhavishya hai, you know, the future is all about EVs. It's about a clean environment, a green supply chain, uh, and a future built on technology. Mm -hmm. Now, different companies will have their own strategies, uh, but I believe India has an opportunity of creating a world-class EV hub. The world is looking for partners to build this future. And India will build it for itself and for the world. Mm -hmm. And only Ola can't do it. The whole industry, other OEMs, new startups, suppliers, tier two companies, global suppliers manufacturing in India, all of these have to come together to make this Indian dream possible. So you talk about the Bhavishya. So is Bhavish going to lead the Bhavishya for the entire industry <laughs> at this point from your point? Uh, that is for you guys to say. <laughs> <laughs> but. Thank you so much for your time, Tushar. Yeah. I have uh, loved uh, yeah. talking to you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for the time, Bhavish. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Yeah.